Welcome to Unk Popular Opinions, a safe space for fans of BTS and other K-pop groups to ask the tough question, what do I think of this? I'm your host, Ginger Nuna, and today we're going to discuss my Unk Popular Opinions about the wildly different reactions to K-pop controversies. For those of you who heard our last episode, you were probably expecting me to discuss the sexualization of Enhypen. Fret not, dear listeners, for that is still on the docket. However, a bit of true-life K-drama has taken the internet by storm. I'm talking about Stray Kids. Han's pre-debut lyrics versus Hyunjin's pre-debut bullying, which are receiving very different reactions from both fans and their label. It's not an exaggeration to say that February 2021 has been a rough month for Stray Kids. The group debuted on March 25th, 2018, when Han was 17 and Hyunjin had just celebrated his 18th birthday. Today, at 19 and 20 years old respectively, both are on trial in the court of public opinion for their actions in their early teens. On February 2nd, a pre-debut recording of 13-year-old Han resurfaced. In this self-written rap, Han uses racist and ableist terms, specifically targeting migrant workers and those with mental health needs. Now, most outlets say Han used what is the Korean equivalent of the N-word. Here's the thing. There is no Korean equivalent of the N-word. While colorism and racism are issues in South Korea, people with darker skin tones have not faced the same levels of violence and persecution that Black people face in the United States. I get trying to understand the situation using comparisons to one's own society, but calling it the Korean N-word is just insulting to those who have died at the hands of white oppression. Cultural context is incredibly important. What Han said was hateful and inappropriate, but we can't view it through our Western lens. The backlash to the lyrics was immediate. Most stays, members of Stray Kids fandom, were quick to condemn not only Han, but other stays who tried to explain away the controversy. On the heels of the 2020 Black Lives Matter movement, K-pop fans have been working diligently to hold themselves and other fans accountable for racist actions. I applaud them for saying that if you aren't a part of the minority that was targeted, you don't get to decide how that minority should feel. Han himself addressed the controversy with a handwritten letter posted to the Stray Kids Twitter account, taking full responsibility for the lyrics. While many stays said they appreciated his sincerity and desire to learn from the situation, others were more hesitant to forgive, and some even considered leaving the fandom. After a few quiet weeks, Stray Kids was faced with another controversy, this time surrounding Hyunjin. On February 22nd, a former classmate of Hyunjin's accused him of bullying. In an online post, the accuser detailed the verbal abuse they withstood during middle school. While Hyunjin faced similar allegations in 2018, they were dismissed when the accuser failed to follow up. The day after the account was posted, JYP Entertainment, the company that manages Stray Kids, released a statement disputing the claims and threatening legal action against those who spread rumors. However, after meeting with the accuser and interviewing other people who were involved in Hyunjin's school life, JYP released an amended statement on February 26th, saying that while it was difficult to prove that Hyunjin had bullied anyone, there were people who had been hurt by his previous words and actions. Like Han, Hyunjin released a handwritten letter of apology. He also met with the victim to apologize in person. Despite the acceptance of these apologies, as of February 27th, Hyunjin has been suspended for all future Stray Kids activities. To say that stays are furious is an understatement. But unlike what happened with Han earlier in the month, the stays weren't mad at Hyunjin. They were mad at JYP. Many dismissed the bullying allegations due to lack of evidence and railed against JYP for using Hyunjin as a scapegoat during a time fraught with accusations. You see, over the last several weeks, over a dozen Korean celebrities of all genders and occupations have been accused of bullying. Some victims allege physical violence, while others brought forth accusations of mental abuse. What I'm most bothered by is the fact that fans of the accused are calling this a witch hunt, saying that their celebrity is being called out because it's the trendy thing to do. You know who else said this? Naysayers during the Me Too movement. At what point did we stop believing the victim? More importantly, when did we start shaming the victim? I was horrified when I opened Twitter and saw people making fun of the person who said Hyunjin hurt them. Just take a second to imagine their pain. 
not only are they being dismissed, but they're being ridiculed. While it is entirely possible that some victims are really aunties jumping on the bandwagon with malicious intent, it's far more likely that they're just everyday people who have suffered and are finally finding the strength to say, you aren't alone, I was hurt too. In the end, I think it's important to consider these facts. Han didn't hurt a specific person. Hyunjin did. Both were completely in the wrong. But support for Han has fallen, while Hyunjin is regarded as a martyr. Wrongdoing is a spectrum, and there is no black or white. Are we fighting to protect some fans, such as those of color, while dismissing others' grievances? Are we as fans holding our idols accountable for the right things? The next time an idol does something wrong, which, knowing Dispatch, will be before you even download this episode, I encourage you to step back and look at the issue as a whole. If that one guy at work whose name you can never remember made the same mistake, would you have the same reaction? Who are you protecting with your reaction? As someone who recently broke up with her favorite band of 23 years, I can attest that you might be protecting yourself. At the end of the day, It's up to you to decide what scandals your idol can't come back from and how you react to controversy. The only way you can is to keep asking, what do I think of this? Before we go, I want to wrap up today's episode with some listener mail. SJ writes, I just finished your last episode about who had the strongest debut, and I was a little surprised by Border Day 1's grade. I think that I would have graded it higher based on the sum of its parts. I would have graded on a curve and forgiven things like 10 months because of how well Let Me In worked, both as a song and a music video. I would have also given them a lot of points for being so ambitious as to introduce their alternate universe in their first music video. I like how you broke down the grade that you gave it. I never thought about how with BTS and TXT, Big Hit had the ability to mold the sound that they wanted for the group, and so they could choose the right voices for each group. They had a surprising lack of control over what in Hypen would be because of the global vote, and thinking about that from a vocal standpoint is interesting. I always thought in Hypen was forged in fire, so their bond is based around that. They may not have been together for years like other groups, but they had bonded quickly through the stress of Island. I appreciate the points you raised and how they made me think. Live on, Ginger Nuna. <laughs> Thanks, SJ, for taking the time to share your unkpopular opinions with us. Listeners, you can send your unkpopular opinions to unkpopularopinionspod at gmail.com. Well, that's it for this episode. Join me next time when I plan to share my unkpopular opinions about the sexualization of Enhypen. That is, unless another K-bomb goes off. Until then, thanks so much for listening, and be sure to subscribe so you're one of the first to know when a new episode is released. I'll see you next time, and don't forget to keep questioning.